Let's try and understand relative and absolute risk in the context of a difference in the prevalence of a disease. So this helps us understand how it is that these things get used. Okay, let's start first of all with one scenario, then we look at another and we'll compare the two. Consider the risk of leukemia after exposure to benzene. Now these are just makey uppy numbers. This isn't off the back of actual science, it's just to illustrate a point, right? The risk of people exposed to benzene, let's say it was 0.04, which is 4%. The risk in the unexposed, let's say, was 0.01, 1%. So the relative risk was, is 4 over 1, which is 4. In other words, people exposed to benzene are four times as likely to get leukemia in this particular example. The absolute risk is 4 minus 1, which is 3%, which means that for every 100 people exposed to benzene, there'll be an additional three people that get leukemia because of the exposure. Got it? Okay. Now, let's look at... Another example that's slightly different, and it's going to illustrate something quite interesting, right? This is the risk of lung cancer after exposure to smoking. So the risk of exposed is 0.8, and the risk in, in unexposed is 0.2, and the relative risk is 0.8 over 0.2, which is 4. Again, the risk, if you're a smoker, you are four times as likely to get lung cancer. Interestingly, the relative risk in the first example was also 4. So the relative risk in both of these was 4. However... Now, here's the interesting part. The absolute risk in the second example is 0.8 minus 0.2, which is 0.6, which is 60%, much, much higher, right? The absolute risk in the exposure to benzene was 3%. What accounts for this difference? The difference is because of prevalence. Lung cancer is, ex is much more prevalent than leukemia, and so it impacts on the absolute risk. But the relative risk might still be the same. 